I'll invite you all to turn with me in your hymn, or your your Bibles. Uh, it's not a hymn study; it's a Bible study. So, uh, John chapter thirteen is where we're going to be at tonight. And Lord willing, we might jump over to Luke chapter twenty-two. So, we're going to start in John thirteen, though. And Judah, could you put up the screen, please? All right, so John chapter number 13. This is a continuation of what our study was last week, but let's go ahead and ask the Lord's uh, blessing on our study tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this night that you have given us. We rejoice with the fact that we are all together, and we thank you for a, a great Christmas. And Father, we ask you to bless this word to our lives, and may we truly uh, encourage one another with the study. And may we get the, uh, the gold and silver and precious jewels out of this text. And Father, we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. And may he be our guide uh, in, as we study, Father. And we thank you for tonight. May you bless each person here, I do pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So John chapter number 13. Who would like to remind us of uh, what point in time of Christ's ministry is this part? So the question is, who remembers last week? So that's good. <laughs> All right. And that's okay. I, I got the answers. So, yes. This is right on the time of the Last Okay, good. So this is in the midst of the Last Supper. And so uh, it's an interesting time that um, it is towards the end of Christ's ministry. And last week we talked about uh, how they, you know, were instructed, specifically Peter and John, were instructed to go before them and to prepare the Passover meal at the specific house that Christ had uh, fully appointed as the place that they were supposed to go. And Christ gave very pinpoint accuracy as to, okay, you're going to go in the city, you're going to see a man with a pitcher, follow him and he will show you where to go. And so, yeah, it's just an amazing thing about, okay, who knew that there was going to be a man with a pitcher? Yeah, you know, and uh, praise the Lord. There's only one man with a pitcher. You might might have multiple ones. Like, okay, which one should I go to? Yeah. Uh, so yes, we have uh, Jesus directing them specifically where to go, and they obeyed. They made uh, the Passover meal, and then it was time for for them to get the final instructions from Jesus. And so notice, thinking about last week, uh, Jesus specifically went through the Lord's table, the, the Last Supper, about the bread and about uh, the, the wine and, and all that being symbolic as to his body and his blood. And then he announced to everybody there that there's somebody here that's going to betray me. And it is an interesting thing that no one picked up. Oh, Judas, definitely him. Oh, definitely Judas, yeah, the one with the money bag. Yeah, he's he's the guy. You know, you have him. You know, just putting money in his pocket or whatever. You know, oh, it's got to be Judas. No, no one suspected him whatsoever. Everybody was asking, oh, is it me? 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 Well, it must be. You know, <laughs> but anyway, and so along with that, unfortunately, uh, came the conversation about who is the greatest. And once again. His disciples has been saying this over and over and over again throughout the Gospels. And so uh, Jesus himself is going to show us who is the greatest, specifically in this text. I think this co coincides very well uh, with that very notion of who is the greatest. Jesus is going to show them who is the greatest. So notice with me in verse number 1, chapter 13 of John, it says, Now before the feast of the Passover... When Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, 
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So, that is the first section that, we, that we're going through. Here's the question that I would like you to answer, or if you have any thoughts about this, I'd love to hear your thoughts, is what is the connection between knowing where he was going and where he came from to watching his disciples' feet? So let me go ahead and read that, uh, that question again, then I'll read through the text again, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. So what is the connection between knowing where he was going, Jesus was going, and where he came from to washing his disciples' feet. So we see in verse number one, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Skip to verse three. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God, and went to God, he ariseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So, does anybody see a connection? Norman? Okay, so, we, so you're focusing on the part about uh, that he loves his own, unto the end. So Jesus Christ knows that his time is come. He kept on saying over and over again, my hour is not yet. My hour is not here yet. My hour is not come until this moment. He knows, okay, now everything is being fulfilled. My hour is come. I know where I am going. I know what I'm going to be doing. And specifically, he is going to finish the task that God has set for him to do. Okay, you're getting ahead of us. <laughs> All right, yes. All right, yes, Mom. Right, so Jesus was a servant, even though he came from God and he was going back to God, you still see the servant, servanthood, servant, servitude, yeah, of Jesus. Yes. All right, any other thoughts? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, absolutely. So he, he not only talks about love, you know, you should love your neighbor as yourself, you should love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, strength. He's the only one that has ever done that perfectly. And he demonstrates that to love his, his disciples in such a way that he's going to wash their feet. <laughs> you wash your own feet. Yeah, so, so he, he <laughs> there's no partiality of, okay, so uh, you think you're the greatest. Yeah, 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 absolutely. See, that's an interesting thing. It, Okay, so if you take this chronologically, and the answer would be yes, but if you take it chronologically with Luke, the answer would be no, if it is the right time that I'm thinking it is. And other commentaries you know, say the same thing. I'm like, okay. So it's kind of an interesting, if it, 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 the timelines for the Gospels are very unique in that sometimes they transpose events that from one point to another point, not necessarily in chronological order, except for Luke, he absolutely is because he is the historian. So, yes, Paul. Not everybody is fully washed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so with Christ, you know, with his words of saying that um, everybody, you know, the washing of the feet, but not everybody is is clean. So, referring to Judas Iscariot. Yes, Wanda. Right, so once again, you're a little ahead of me, but that's okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. I know, I know without the other context, so uh, perhaps I just, I put that on myself, so okay. Um, so, okay, let me ask you this question. Any other, uh, are there other specific times that you can think of in Jesus' ministry that he served? Okay, so changing water into wine, he's helping uh, his mom specifically with, uh, with her request. Yep, serving, yep. He healed the sick, yep, he was a servant. And especially, you know, he didn't turn anybody away. It's, you know, they came, they were going to get healed eventually, you know. Like, uh, for instance, the Canaanite woman, she came, 
He ignored her, but eventually she, he did do exactly what she wanted him to do, um, just t- testing her faith. So, yes, Amy. Yeah. So they were hungry. <laughs> so uh, that's an amazing one because it's in all four Gospels. And so uh, Jesus knows their, their, how physically they are, and his disciples come to him and say, well, why don't we just send them away so they can get some food? And Jesus said, no, they're not going to make it if they do. No, you find them food. Okay, well, what do we got? Well, uh, here's how much we have in our money bag. Well, that's, not, that's only going to be enough to give everybody a little scrap there. Here you go. Here's your little scrap. Here's a little scrap. Be warm, be filled. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that sort of thing. And then, oh, this little kid has a, has a sock lunch. Okay, he's willing to give it. All right, I can do that. And so, yeah, he blesses it and sends it out. Feeds 5,000, not counting um, women and children. So it's probably more like 10 to 15. Right. (laughs) It's not our fault that they didn't think ahead. (laughs) Any other other (laughs) times that Jesus was a servant? Yeah, well, the the ultimate sign of him serving uh, other people is that he went to the cross willingly, and so he paid all of our sin debt in full, even though, uh, humanly speaking, um, just thinking about it, he didn't have to. You know, just humanly speaking, now God has other plans entirely, but in all reality, there's no reason why he should save us, because we're not that good, because we're not, in our minds, we would not be worth it, you know, all of that all the heartache and all the, the separation that he would feel between him and God the Father. So yeah, it's an amazing thing to think about. All right, so now let's go ahead and read verses 6 and through 8 now. It says, Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter saith, Unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Well, let's stop right there. So let's ask the question. Um, let's see, what was Peter's issue about Jesus washing his feet? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I never thought of that way. Uh, so Peter, he sees Jesus do it, and he is the greatest. And well, I don't want to do that, so uh, let's 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 not do that anymore. Let's let's change change job descriptions, I guess. Yeah. So, all right. Any other thoughts? That's a good thought. Yes. Yes. Never is a long time. In fact, I'm glad you you pointed out that word never, because in the original language, that is the most intense never I have ever seen in the text. Because it's not only never, it's, okay, so there's a way of saying no, not, that's ooh or may, put them together, ooh, may, then that's never, okay? Here, it's never, uh, ooh, may, never, ever, and then it says into eternity, never, ever, forever. (laughs) That's what he's actually saying in the original language, is like, oh, wow, that never is really emphatic. You will never, ever, ever, for all eternity, you will never wash my feet. <laughs> yes, Peter is always extra with, with that. So, yeah, he, he is very bold about that. So, yeah. All right. Any other thoughts? So, so he has the thought of, okay, this is the king. The king of, that, of the kingdom of God is stooping down to do something that a lowly servant should do. Yeah, well, just like Peter, he, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he doesn't think it's becoming for the Messiah to wash his feet, his dirty, nasty feet. No, not at all. No, we can't put God in a box, that's for sure. No matter what you know, theological box we want. Okay, God can only do this and nothing more. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're eliminating God quite a bit because he can do whatever he wants to do. You know, he can be on that box and he is beyond the box. So, yeah, praise the Lord for that. Yeah, right. If we know all of, yeah, if we know all about God, then our God is not worthy to be worshipped. If we, if we know all the ins and outs about our God, our God's pretty small. Because we're finite, he's infinite. So yeah, you can't wrap your head around infinite. 
All right, any other thoughts? Yes, Christina. Right. Yeah, we saw from uh, Luke chapter 22 that he said, with desire, I have desired to, to spend this meal with you. I've looked forward to this. And uh, when the object of being the greatest, he goes along with his own teaching and said, okay, if you want to be first, you want to be last. He that is uh, the greatest is a servant to all. And so Jesus is demonstrating that to everybody, even though Peter, he, he doesn't get it. You know, he, and even Jesus says that, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. He's like, You're, you don't understand it, but I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> okay, okay, but... Okay, so we have, he, he says, okay, I will never wash, you know, let you wash my feet. If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Verse number 9, let's go ahead and look at um, verse number 9 now. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all, not all, for he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, ye are not all clean. So, all right, let's go ahead and, and talk about this. Why did Peter now increase what Jesus was, was doing, was planning on doing? He, you know, he's going to wash his feet. No, no, wash my head, wash my hands now. Yes, Paul. <laughs> 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 yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's do everything, yeah. So in order for him to, to, to keep on with the fellowship that he has with Jesus, he wants to go even a step further and say, okay, just, just douse me all with, uh, with water. Just, just do the whole thing. And, and then he's, Jesus said, no. Any other thoughts? This is good. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that in verse number 10, it's Jesus saith unto uh, uh, to him, he that is washed needeth not to, not save to wash his feet. The, the first wash is a different word from the second wash. The first wash means to actually literally take a bath or take a shower, you know, be fully cleansed, like what you would do in the you know, beginning part of the day. Is, okay, you're going to bathe. And you're going to get totally cleansed. But then, in the second word, it's the minor application of water uh, on a um, on a uh, uh, just a minor level of of washing it is the the uh, upkeep. It's, so one is the cleansing, the other one is to upkeep as you're going through the day. This needs to be done. So that's kind of an interesting thing uh, that for, for me to think about. Uh, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. So yeah, as what Wanda was saying um, about the very fact that he's teaching and also a lesson there about forgiveness and the fa very fact that Jesus is going to wash them clean through the, the death on the cross, but yet they are already clean by their faith in the Messiah. And so they're already saved believers. They are already uh, have eternal life, and they have everything that they need to be clean, and they are clean except for Judas Iscariot. It, it's an interesting thing. The, the question is, okay, is Judas, was Judas saved? Well, according to this, no. If we take, you know, you are not, you all are clean except for, you know, not every one of you. And so it's kind of an interesting thing that he never really truly believed on the Messiah. Wanda. Right. Yeah, so, so the, the total washing that we have is when we first came to Christ. And now the upkeep is us going, 1 John 1, 9, of if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Pastor, you, you got some. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Any other thoughts? Yes, Mom. So yeah, you are washed. If you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, you are washed of all your sins at that one moment in time. But as what, uh, what we understand by practical uh, application of daily walking is that, well, we keep on sinning. <laughs> That's the thing about it. But we need to get, get back into fellowship with God as time goes on. Yeah, true, true. If we're going to be sanitary in our own daily uh, lives, that... Uh, we wash our hands before we eat. We wash our hands, various activities. 
you know, if we go to a place, you know, it's a good idea to wash your hands when you get back to a place you can. Like uh, my kids going to the park, and now the rule is when they get home, you got to wash your hands immediately, and so that uh, no sickness comes from the park, because that's kind of what we figured out. It's like, oh, it's it's the park. Wash your hands. <laughs> Interesting. All right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next portion. And verse number 12, he says, for af- okay, let's actually, um, let's see. Yeah, that's it. Verse number 12. So after he had uh, washed their feet and taken, had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them." Here's the question I want to ask. Why would a person be happy if they served like Jesus? He says, happy are ye. Go ahead, Genevieve. Okay. Greater is it to give than receive. Yep, yep. All right. Any other thoughts? You'll be like him. Yep, that's true. Yeah, Norman. Better frame of mind. That's true. Yeah, and we're just obeying God, so we're in fellowship with God as we're trying to do what he said to do. Laura? Right, so if we are walking with the Lord, then we have the evidence of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which joy is part of that. So yeah, you're going to be happy if you do these things. And think about it like this, another portion of Christ's teaching with the Sermon on the Mount, if people mistreat you, you're still happy, you're still rejoicing because great is your treasure in heaven, and that's only if we're walking in the Spirit. You know, if we're in the flesh and things happen to us and, and uh, you know, how oh, you're a Christian and, and different things happen to us and we're walking in the flesh, well, we're not going to be very joyful. We're not going to be very happy. We're going to have a, probably a pity party. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to get out of the pity party once it's there. But, uh, yeah, praise the Lord that God gives us the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. And, uh, yeah, if we do these things, we are happy. And uh, yes, Genevieve, very true, very true. So um, Jesus is the ultimate display of being a servant, and he is the king. He is the greatest. Uh, and that, that's what I was trying to get across with the, the first few verses of Jesus is the one. He is the Messiah. He is God in the flesh. And even God in the flesh, when he sees the opportunity, he's going to humble himself and serve his disciples. And then he says, okay, I have done it to you, now you do it for each other. And you just think about about the difference of hierarchy with that, but yes, we are all equal in in the sight of God, and we all have different gifts. God made us very unique in our own ways, and so it's just a a blessing. Pastor. (laughs) 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 Even the dishes, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, yeah, the practical applications right there. Of, yeah. Serve. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Serving one another is, you know, the definitely the, the practical applications. It's really gross. Yeah. <laughs> but, yep. Impossible if we're not walking in the Spirit. So, yeah. So yes, yes, forgiveness, forgiving a person is ju- just as hard as washing somebody's nasty, dirty feet. Uh, yeah, and sometimes it's actually harder because you can, <laughs> you could you know, just force, okay, I'm going to be able to do this. Okay, fine, it's all done and, and, and all that. But then if you don't forgive a person, that's not as easily seen. It's uh, difficult, yes, and bitterness can creep up. Norman. <laughs> Very true, very true. Let me go ahead and um, turn over to Luke chapter 22 now. 
Because in the discussion about who is the greatest, Jesus actually adds to this with some other points. In Luke chapter 22, I'll begin... Actually, let me go ahead and just start in verse number 24. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. This is where we ended last time. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at me, or he that serveth, it is it is not he that sitteth at me, but I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which are, have continued with me in my temptations, and I appointed you unto a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So he, he's saying that, okay, you are not to be like the Gentiles in this way. And the word benefactors, it, it would be uh, an, another term of uh, workers of good. Um, I can never say the word right. Uh, we have in our current English of philanthropists. Am I close? Okay, you all know what I'm saying, so that's good. Um, and so that, that's kind of the, the way that the Gentile rulers would be, is that, okay, we are showing our goodness to our people, but it's all to make ourselves look good. It's like a politician that is serving at a, uh, like a homeless shelter, you know, a soup kitchen or whatever. You know he's not going to do that for very long. He's there for the pictures. And then uh, off he goes. And so it's very much like that. He says, okay, the Gentiles, they execute or they have authority and they're called benefactors. They're going to be like this. They're, they're the politicians of the day, but they're really not serving. They're really not, they're going to be the top guys. They're going to be the head honchos here. Um, but ye shall not be so. And he establishes here the very fact that uh, they have to look forward to is a, a, a top spot in the kingdom itself. And so he says in verse number uh, 29, And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, notice this, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. I don't know. <laughs> uh, how does this work out? I don't know. Uh, so we have the, the 12 that are judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And then in another uh, book of the Bible, the Apostle Paul says, don't you know that, that we will be judging angels? I'm like, I have no idea how that's going to work either. So, but yet it is a prominent position that they're going to have. But in order to have that prominent position, he says, okay, you have to be like me. You have to serve as I have served you. Who is greater, the master at the table or him that serves? Well, him that is the master, it, he is the greatest. But yeah, I tell you, that he that serves, because I'm that servant. I'm the one that helps you. So that's just a, a point about uh, further explaining what, what he's talking about with the, the foot washing and all of that. Um, so let me ask you the question. Um, what lessons can we take away for regarding our relationship with God based on what we learned tonight? And I, I know we said a lot about application, so um, any, any thoughts about that? Yes, Genevieve. Right. So gratitude towards what Jesus did for us and humbling himself and uh, did all the things that he needed to do in order to save us. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Any other thoughts? So recognizing on a daily basis our sins are forgiven and we should walk, be walking the way we should to have close fellowship with God. Yeah. All right, anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't... Right, right. So, yeah, servants, uh, servant heart, servant attitude. Uh, it, it doesn't go with the, the very thought of, oh, he doesn't need this to be done. So, yeah, always good to ask. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we have a demonstration of people that, that want to be great in the eyes of man, at least. And so, yeah, for us, we need to be the opposite. We need to be uh, 
great in the eyes of God, which is, means serving. And not serving begrudgingly either. That's not, oh, i got to do this again. No, it's more out of love uh, for God and for others. Yes, Norm? Yeah, probably, yeah. Absolutely. There is a, uh, a well-known pastor that uh, pastors thousands of people, and uh, he, he was you know, on a trip going to uh, a place to speak, and he was with another person that was speaking at the conference. And the person you know, leaned over and said to him, isn't it interesting that uh, the, the greatest in the kingdom is probably that pastor that's pastoring a very small uh, church that is just faithful in what he's doing? compared to us that's speaking to thousands. And so it's just a kind of an interesting thought about how God weighs everything out uh, for that. So, all right, so that great uh, study. And so um, let's go ahead and take opportunity for prayer requests.